Hello, in this video I'm going to walk you through your first hands-on activity at where you're going to actually develop your first data visualization in R. And you have two options for this application exercise. Option one is looking at the UN General Assembly data uh, on the voting patterns of countries uh, in the UN that we talked about in the previous video. And option two is looking at some data from COVID-19. Uh, these are fatality numbers across the globe. You don't have to do both of them. Uh, you should pick one and complete it. If you're interested, you can try the other one as well. The tasks are very similar between the two, just the data set is different. I know that some of you might be very interested in working with COVID-19 data, so I wanted to throw it in here. And some of you might be thinking, that's really not what I want to do in this class. So I wanted to give you an alternative as well. So let's take a look to see first what the task is going to be. Uh, I'll walk you through the UN votes uh, example to begin with. So we're going to go to RStudio Cloud, which you should be able to get uh, uh, an access link to if you go to Learn. So um, I don't have a great way of embedding that link in this video. So we have posted it on Learn and you should have it in the course announcements as well. The first time that you go to RStudio Cloud, you're going to need that access link that is personalized to you in order to be able to join the space for this course. And I'm going to show you in a second once you join what things look like. Once that is done uh, and you are in the class uh, for our Studio Cloud, the next time around you can just go to rstudio.cloud in your browser and you should be able to see on the left hand side um, a list our introduction to data science listed and as i add more exercises uh, there for you to try out as you're working through the videos or you're working on any other assignments for the course you're going to be able to access it that way uh, so the first one is going to be called uh, AE, which stands for Application Exercise. So whenever you see that prefix in front of these um, projects that you see on our Studio Cloud, that means this is an optional hands-on exercise that's sprinkled throughout the videos that we strongly recommend that you do, but these are not going to be collected or graded. Um, and the first one is called First Data Viz, and since we have two options, I've named them O1A and O1B. The first, uh, the 01A is the UN votes data set. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up this project. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. So once you join RStudio Cloud uh, using the join link from Learn and get into the workspace for our course, if you click on projects, you should be able to see something similar to what I'm seeing here, depending on how many other exercises have been added by the time you actually log on here, you might see a longer list or not and you should be able to see your name in the corner here. This is the name of my fake student account, Florence Nightingale. So in my videos, when I'm demoing things, you're going to see that. So you can choose, pick your uh, choice. Uh, so I'm going to start with the UN votes data set and I'm going to click on start. So what's happening when I click on start here is that our studio is uh, launching a new project. So each of these exercises or each of the assignments that you work on are going to be their individual projects and you'll be able to see them on that list for yourself. So right now I'm launching a project. As I'm waiting for that launch to happen, one thing I want to draw your attention to is that when you log on to our Studio Cloud, oftentimes you're going to see this menu on the left hand side visible, uh, which is good for navigation. If you were enrolled in multiple courses, you would be able to see those here. There's also some information, uh, help information and whatnot that might be useful. But when you're actually working on these exercises, you probably want all of the screen real estate. So I actually like clicking on these three lines, the hamburger menu to make that go away so that I have all of the space uh, that I want to work with. So let's go ahead. The first uh, step of our exercise was to open our R Markdown document. And uh, as I mentioned in one of the videos briefly, an R Markdown document is a computational document where you get to put in your narrative, your prose, your code, and then your output is embedded in there as well, since the R code that you run, uh, that you put into this document is actually run every time you click knit. Uh, before I click knit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set things up so that uh, when I knit the document, it doesn't show up in a pop-up window, but instead it shows up on the side so that we can see things side by side in the video. And in order to be able to do that, I'm going to click on this gear icon here and say preview in viewer pane. And once that is checked, I am going to click on knit. And what this process of knitting does is it takes your source document, which again has some plain text, your narrative, your code, and uh, runs the code, renders the plain text into a nicely formatted document that looks something like this. 
And not only do you now see your code, but you're able to see your output here as well. Um, I haven't yet taught you a whole lot of R code, and my goal is not to do that in this very brief video. But my goal is to remind you uh, the exercise that we were tasked with, which is to take a look at the data visualization that is created here, the same one from our video, where we're looking at the voting patterns of Turkey, uh, UK and Northern Ireland, and the United States. And your task is to look through this code that might not make a whole lot of sense to you just yet and change one or more of the countries to a country of your own choosing. So I'm not gonna give away the answer, but what I will say is that if you want to change the output, instead of actually touching the output, what we do is we go to the source document and we make our changes in the source document. And once any changes are made, we once again click knit to see the new result. So instead of giving you the answer, I am going to make some other change here. So let's say I said hello, um, and I go ahead and knit it. You can see that R automatically saves that change, even though I didn't explicitly tell it to do so. And then once I knit it and take a look at the output, I should be able to see my new text here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this so that it doesn't confuse anybody else when they come back and uh, do the exercise. If you want to try the other exercise, that's going to look very similar. So let's go back out to uh, the uh, assignment space and let's start a new, uh, the other project, which is the COVID-19 project. Um, and here the task is exactly the same again. I have a data visualization this time based on the COVID-19 data, again for a selection of countries uh, that I wanted to see initially. And your task is to change one or more of these countries to be something else and take a look at the data visualization. So once you log on, you're going to be able to see a very similar uh, setup. You once again have an R Markdown file. The first one was called UN Votes. This is called COVID. Uh, this is called COVID. The RMD extension stands for R Markdown. I click on it to pop it open. I'm once again going to say that I want to preview it in the viewer pane, and I'm going to click on Knit, and I'm going to let R do its thing while we're talking. Um, and just to show you again, some narrative and then some code in what we call these R chunks. And let's take a look at the output. So we're looking at as of uh, today, actually, the 21st, you are uh, looking at the, um, the uh, fatality counts from various countries. So in this particular visualization, I have data from US, UK, France, Turkey, and China. And again, your task is to uh, change things up uh, and take a look at uh, one or more different countries. All right, let's give it a try.